let's consider a special improper integral that we're going to need for chapter 9. So we're looking at improper integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x raised to the p, where p is a fixed number. Now notice, this is just going to be our first type of improper integral. We have a vertical asymptote if I put in for 0, but 0 doesn't appear in the range from 1 to infinity, so the only issue is going out to infinity on the right. We're going to have two cases for our answer. When p is less than or equal to 1, we're going to have the improper integral diverging to plus infinity. And if p is bigger than 1, we're going to get an answer 1 over p minus 1. This makes sense because if you notice, as p gets closer and closer to 1, p minus 1 gets closer and closer to 0. And so when we finally hit 1, we're going to expect some divergence going on, which agrees with what we get in the first case. So that's nothing concrete. That's just to give us an idea of what's happening with our result in the two cases. Now, let's separate out one case of this, p equal to 1. If I have p equals 1, I'm looking at dx over x. And when I take the antiderivative of that, okay, add 1, flip it over, it doesn't work. But instead, we're going to use definition of natural log. So I follow my nose. We're going to rewrite this improper integral as a limit of the definite integral from 1 to b of dx over x. We stick in our antiderivative, which is natural log of x. We're sticking b and 1, take the difference. Note, natural log of 1 is 0, so we're just left with a natural log of b. And then all I have to do is check the graph to see where the limit's going. Okay, recall, we need four things to graph natural log of x. We'll need three points, and we'll need to know that there's a vertical asymptote at 0, at x equals 0. So, three points I want are going to be e, 1, and 1 over e. Natural log of e is going to be equal to 1. Natural log of 1 is going to be equal to 0. Natural log of 1 over e is minus 1. So if we plot each of those points knowing that e is roughly 2.7, we'll get something like this, and we can connect the dots. And so that's going to be my graph of natural log of x. And note, as x goes out to infinity, the y values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is going to go to plus infinity. So that'll definitely diverge to plus infinity. Let's consider the second case, p is not equal to 1. So here, add 1, flip it over, perfectly good procedure for antiderivatives in this case. We follow our nose, limit definite integral from 1 to b of x to the minus p. We add 1, flip it over, put our values in, and then take the difference. And then we notice we're taking the limit of essentially b to the 1 minus p as b goes to infinity. So let's take a look. This is going to split into two cases. When I have 1 minus p bigger than 0, that's going to be the same as saying p is less than 1. Let's take a look. Well, this is going to be the exponent of my b to the 1 minus p. So I just pretend that 1 minus p is in a box. If that's positive, then this is x to a positive power. And these functions, well, the concavity may vary depending on what the exponent is, but the gist of this is going to be that they go off to infinity in y as x goes out to plus infinity. So that's going to give me x going to infinity. This limit's going to be plus infinity. And so in the case where p is less than 1, we're going to have divergence to plus infinity. In my other case, I have 1 minus p less than 0, or p is bigger than 1. Let's take a look. If 1 minus p is negative, well then, if I flip things into the bottom, we're looking at 1 over x to a positive power when we look at this thing. These functions are going to look like this. They're going to come down, and then there's going to be a horizontal asymptote as these things get driven down to 0 as we go off to infinity. So the limit here is going to be 0. And then you note, OK, we're going to put a 0 in here. So that's going to leave this limit turning into a minus 1. And then when it hits the 1 over 1 minus p, that's just going to change it into 1 over p minus 1, just like that. So that's our improper integral and the two cases. Let's just do two concrete examples to drive things home. All right, so if I go 1 to infinity of dx over x cubed, 
We add 1 and flip it over. This is x to the minus 3, so add 1 gives me minus 2. Flip it over gives me minus a half. And then we're going to go from 1 to b, limit of b going to infinity. We sort all this out. That's going to give me 1 half minus a half, 1 over b squared. As b goes to infinity, 1 over b squared is going to go to 0. So I'm going to be left with a 1 half. So my p here is equal to 3. Right, it's 3. So that's bigger than 1, and we see that this is going to converge to a half. My second case, let's take a look. I have dx over x to the 1 half. So we run through our procedure again. Any derivative of this is going to be add 1 and flip it over. So this is x to the minus 1 half. So if I add 1, it becomes 1 half. Flip it over, puts a 2 out in front. We're going from b to 1. We stick them in and take the difference. That's going to give me 2b to the 1 half minus 2. We take the limit as b goes to infinity. Well, remember, all right, we go this, but we actually know the graph of x to the 1 half. That looks like this. So when I go off to infinity, the y values are definitely going up to infinity also. So the limit here is going to be plus infinity. And so when I have p equal to a half, we have divergence to plus infinity. So the examples check out.